welcome. Thank you for joining Thanks, us. John. You are a lecturer at the Department of Fashion and Textiles mm-hmm. at the University of Huddersfield. I am. Um, when I read your bio, so it was Julia uh, in the masquerade dress over there who suggested that uh, you should be part of the lineup today and we should speak to you. And when I first looked up your bio, I read your bio on whatever LinkedIn or wherever it was, and I was like, this dude sounds like a spy. You've got all sorts of secret projects and... Oh, yes, top secret. So you work in the university now. Tell us a little bit about what you do there, but that's not your background, is it? No, no. Um, yeah, most of my work has been involved with industry and we develop a particular industry. So I'm actually relatively new to academia. I joined the university in 2018. And before that, I worked for a spin-out company for the University of Leeds. I saw sense, uh, Mark will tell you. And uh, yeah, so I worked for 13 years at a spin-out company, which was basically developing new products, new technologies for all sorts of commercial companies. Everything from relatively small companies to multi-billion pound companies. Because these people launch things and they say, hey, look what we've developed. And a little team of people tucked away in a lab in uh, in West Yorkshire actually developed it for them. But of course they can't. That's all secret. They don't want you to know that. The point at which the microphone kicked in there, a secret lab in West Yorkshire, it a sounds like you're responsible lab. for COVID. A secret lab. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you've done loads of interesting, exciting <laughs> stuff. And, now, and you've got into academia now. I have, yeah. So, well, as you said, dr- dramatic and everything like that. That as well. So I also run a theatre group in Oakley called Upstages. Shout out to Upstages. Quite a distance, about an hour away from here, but uh, I'm up from north of Leeds and Bradford. Up, uh, but Huddersfield is a second home to Norway too. But uh, um, yeah, so I love working with kids and educating. Um, my mum was a teacher as well. So I think I've had the background there. And uh, I've just got a passion for, it sounds maybe a little bit, a bit cheesy, but just making things better. So be it in terms of teaching, be it in terms of inventing something new that will help people's lives, save people's lives and everything like that. It's a, it's a great area to work in. That doesn't sound cheesy at all. That sounds really helpful. Um, I think but it's interesting. We we always say we're trying to change the world even a little bit for the better. And I think there is there's some um, embarrassment about that sometimes because I don't know why. Where, do, know. You, where do you feel that? Um, I, don't, I don't know really. I mean, I'm proud of what I do. It's um, it's good. Yeah, you can put some things up. He's a bit full of himself. He's just dead. But, oh, I uh, see. It's a proper. It's a proper Yorkshire thing. It's right? a proper it's Yorkshire it. thing. It's downplaying everything. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Be bold. Find a cure for cancer. Oh no, I didn't do it. I didn't go out. <laughs> no. Um. So, uh, you have, you. I know that you would like to talk about a lot of very cool things because we're talking about uh, what I, the journey I've been on with woven and in textiles. I'll be honest with you. Before we got invited in to help uh, host this day. I knew very little about textiles and I did think probably all the cliches Um, and there's lots of amazing things that you are developing in the industry. Tell us about some of them, come on. Yeah, well, you're absolutely right because the, um, I think textiles has got to be an image problem, quite possibly. I think you say textiles to a lot of people, they think dark dark satanic mills and uh, all that kind of thing. and they think, um, when you think of textiles in terms of school and everything, you think craft and design. And craft and design is brilliant, but it's just one aspect of textiles. You've got chemistry, you've got physics, you've got engineering. You've got all these different disciplines. Textiles touch every single aspect of our lives. And that's why I love what I do, because when I was working and working in, in all these industry projects and everything like that, and now at the university as well, one day I might be working with blood filters and another day I might be working with building materials and all that kind of thing so it's incredibly diverse well, te- because yeah blood filters is one of the things that you've just sort of thrown at me before how how are blood what is a blood filter and how does that relate to textile there are different types of blood filters um yeah textiles you can engineer structure so textiles I see textile textiles as I say is chemistry design all that kind of thing but a big part of my background with textiles is engineering so you wouldn't be an architect if you didn't understand your building materials. Yeah. And textiles, in a weird way, is a bit like architecture. You understand these materials, but instead of planks of wood and I beams and concrete and blocks and brief blocks, you've got these tiny little fibers. And if you engineer them and build them in a certain way, you could get a load of wood, you could stick it in a big pile, and it's a pile of wood. Or you could take that same wood and make it into a log cabin or something. It's just how you actually put it together. 
So it's not only the materials we've got, it's how you combine them together as well that uh, gives you this myriad of different things you can do. So in terms of, to answer your question, sorry, I tend to go on. No, no, it's good, it's good. Um, so to answer your question, blood filters. So they've often got textiles in them. There's some that don't, but um, so you've got these little fibers and they can trap certain things. So I worked on a project um, in my in my previous life um, when I was a spy, as a spy, as a spy um, to in, develop- In Wuhan. Yes. <laughs> To develop, um, so did some work on a textile and you can treat the surface of the textile with a certain chemistry. And then when those things in your blood differentiate, you know, I don't, I, I can never remember what blood type I have, but you know your A, your B, your A, B, your O, all that kind of thing like that. And you have to be really careful when you're donating blood because if you get the wrong blood type, there could be incompatibilities, and you can get very sick and all that kind of thing. So hospitals normally need to keep a supply of each type of blood. Oh, he's got a really rare blood type, so we can't give him that kind of blood or her that kind of blood or something like that. So this blood filter has got these, uh, it's react with the chemistry on the surface of the textile fiber to put these little chemicals, and they basically grab those differentiating features, take them out of the blood. So hopefully, it's not commercialized yet to develop universal blood donor plasma. So a hospital would only need to keep one type of thing, which would work for everybody, so you wouldn't get those possibilities super cool medical applications for working <laughs> in textiles okay we can, let's smash through some of these and you can yeah i'll just sort of say thread thread okay yeah so um um another project involves sewing thread which when you when it goes through its normal life it's like normal thread you can iron it you can wash it you sew things together with it you can trigger it and it will lose all its strength and basically the clothes fall to bits i mean that sounds like now, for some don't of us, anybody worry. A useful pink. I've, I've not got like a laser gun that can fire at any one of you and all your clothes will fall off or anything like that. Somebody once asked me at a conference when I was presenting about this and they said, um, if you go through an airport security thing, through that thing where it scans you, will, will all your clothes fall off? Don't worry. It's actually microwaves that it cause it. So you, you hit them with a certain frequency of microwaves. And you may know microwaves have... Um, have an effect on metal. You don't stick metal things in your microwave because they heat up. Yep. So the thread, I can tell you this because it's all in the patterns and it's all public knowledge and everything like that. A lot of the things I've told you, I'll have to kill you all along later, but you're all right for this one. You're all right, don't panic. Um, so you can microwave them. I'm joking, don't worry, I'm joking. Um, so you can microwave it. It heats up a little bit, it fries the thread, but it doesn't do anything to the rest of the garment. So the thread loses all its strength and the garment just pulls apart. So if you want to recycle, you want to take the buttons off, the zips off, the uh, the panels of it and everything like that. That's what we were talking about with Mark and Charles before. I mean, that sounds cool, Recycling. right? You're yeah. going, so, maybe you're going, yeah, what, what, yeah, yeah, cool, why can I get it? All right, um, excellent, so that's thread, plasma. Plasma, anyone heard of plasma? Anyone actually know what it is? Anyone heard of plasma outside of the stuff that's in your blood? Charles, well, Charles is nervously sticking his hand up. So plasma, is effectively the fourth state of matter. If I get very high brow, I hide. Cool. The most famous incident of plasma that you'll all see is lightning. So you've heard, you know, lightning, don't you? So what plasma is, is a gas, and you put shed loads of energy, electricity, lasers, whatever into it, and it breaks all the gas molecules up into these incredibly reactive things. So we don't tend to have, at the University of Hospital, don't worry, we're not making Frankenstein's monster. There's not like a big lightning rod on top of the building and we've got sort of things wandering around the labs like this. It's um, it's actually something that looks is not much bigger than your domestic oven. So um, Mark's got one as well at the University of Leeds. So you can take that, you put a gas in there, you put loads of energy into it and all these little reactive chemicals come up. And if you've got a bit of fabric in there as well, they think, I'll react with that. And they grab onto it and react with it. And over the surface of the fibers, you get a very different chemistry. So, if you can imagine a bit of gas. Now, if you want to colour your clothes, has anyone done dyeing at home with a washing machine and all that kind of thing, yeah? So dyeing fabric treatments, they tend to be wet treatments. So you take a chemical, you dilute it down in loads of water, slosh your fabric around in it, and then you tip all that waste and you've got to get rid of it. And then you've got to dry your fabric, and then maybe you've got to do some other kind of treatment. So you dry your fabric, and then you have to wet it again, and you slosh it around in some more chemicals. You produce all this stuff that you've got to get rid of. With plasma, I'm not saying it solves everything, but it can do an awful lot of things. You can use the plasma, you put it through a chamber or something like that, 
You've got a gas supply going in there, very small amount of chemicals. Fabric comes out the other side, no wet treatment, no dyeing. You don't need the energy for ovens, all that kind of stuff. And you can put all sorts of treatments. So you can make, say, a cotton fabric. So cotton, if it was chucking it down now and we were wearing cotton, we'd all be absolutely soaked because cotton soaks loads of water up and that kind of thing. If you treat it with plasma, it's possible to make that cotton, even though it's still technically cotton, just on the surface, it's a molecule thick layer. You can make it hydrophobic. So the cotton becomes effectively waterproof. Cool. And also you can make stuff. It's not just water retardant. It's no, no, flame retardant. Flame retardant, antimicrobial, all sorts of different properties you can put it, depending on the, the gas and the chemicals that you put in there. Who wants a lightning machine? You, I thought yeah. you underdid the, the machine. I was going to go, you smash it with lightning. I've got one of them in my lab. Yeah, yeah. We pull this big lever and, uh, yeah. and lightning crackles down from the ceiling. And uh, yeah, then we're it's away. so cool. Okay. Uh, plasma Wound dressings. Wound dressings. Wound dressings is a really interesting area. I've done projects with wound dressings for virtually all the major wound dressing companies. And you'd be amazed what they're made out of. So you've got wound dressings. So if you've got a, if you, you know, some people have leg ulcers and things like that, which aren't particularly nice. Don't don't Google leg ulcers. Don't def, no, definitely not before you've eaten either. Um, so you can put these things on there, and they basically absorb things coming out of the wound and help protect it, make it antimicrobial and things like that. And these wound dressings can be made. We've got fibres that are made out of shrimp shells. That's a that's a particular thing called chitosan. We've got uh, wound dressings made out of wallpaper paste which is carboxymethyl cellulose, which is just a posh word for wallpaper paste. But you know with wallpaper paste, you get your wallpaper paste, you put some water in it, and it all soaks up until it forms a gel. Well, you can do that in a wound dressing, but with fibres made of this stuff, it soaks up anything from the wall, forms a gel, so it's quite cooling and soothing. It still absorbs all the stuff that's coming out of the wound. And um, what's another one as well? Seaweed as well, alginates. That's a, that's a great area of research. We're doing a lot of work with alginates at the moment. Because alginates are... Related to cellulose, which is the same sort of stuff that cotton's made out of, and viscose and lysol and all that kind of stuff, these trees, they're full of cellulose. So alginates are in seaweed. They're very close related. The chemicals are very close related. But certain types of alginates, when you get them wet, again, they'll gel up with a load of water. So it goes from a fabric into a like a jelly. There are loads of really cool applications. So, so there is hardcore science engineering inside there we've talked well there is the art and design elements obviously we've also got the sustainability elements um there's so much there's two textiles uh that you're there and but it's still got this image problem because people don't know about this so maybe it's but uh you're quite keen you have a question for our audience don't you yeah i'd like to know because you've been asking questions of all the speakers coming up here what can we do to improve the image of textiles what can we, because textiles are everywhere, we're all wearing textiles, we're always going to need textiles, but we're not going to, we're not going to answer this question now, because it's a bit on the spot, right, mm. because what we're actually going to do, I mean, what can we do to improve the image of textiles, apart from obviously get spectacular spandex to represent? Absolutely, it's maybe <laughs> the solution, it's maybe what we're looking for. <laughs> Certainly make lectures a lot more interesting at university, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, for those of you that don't already know this, I found I was told by Spectacular Spandex this morning, Spandex is an anagram of expands. Who knew? I know. Why didn't we know this? I've got PhD in textiles. I never realised that. Why? Did you not know that too? I didn't know that. No. Genuinely. Genuinely. <laughs> and there's so much they're hiding from us. A bit like to. Um, so keep that question in your head because uh before we then go back to you andrew and to our next guest ashley to um for you to ask them any questions that you might have about the amazing things that are going on we're going to get um Ash Ash ashley's one of your students right yeah ashley is doing a phd um for about six months now at the at the university um not with me but we are all that against her but one of my colleagues but uh, two of my colleagues Okay. But, uh, yeah, she's got all sorts of interesting things to talk about. So this is where the applications will come in. So we're going to talk about the general stuff, the amazing stuff, the very applied stuff that actually we're going to get you in. We're going to give you the big up in a second. Uh, but hold in mind now, we're going to be asking for your ideas on how we can help to improve the image of textiles more generally. But for now, would you just give a temporary round of applause to Dr. Andrew Hewitt? <laughs> Andrew, I'm going to invite you to just step out. Thank you very much. We're going to get you back in a moment. And right now, would you please welcome into the shed 
Steve is genuinely a very experienced <laughs> technical stage manager who tolerates my banter. Uh, uh, so um, we've got a whole new system that's going on. It's always a bit like this outdoors. Uh, Ashley, thank you so much for joining us in the shed. Um, as we heard, you are a student doing a PhD. You are going to be a doctor very soon. I hope so. Yeah. I've got three years to go left. <laughs> three years to go. I'm just going to have to keep doing the translating. Do you know any songs? Me? <laughs> Please don't make me sing. <laughs> that made the microphone work. Just through the power of... No! Ashley, hi. Um, so you're a student at Huddersfield University doing a PhD. Yes. What are you researching? Um, so my research is in the development of nanofunctionalized electronic textiles for thermoregulation applications. Um, so essentially, I'm going to be looking at using nanotechnology, which is the manipulation of matter at the nanoscale, um, to functionalize textiles which are electrically conductive um, for thermoregulation purposes, so heating, cooling, or temperature sensing. I understood all of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the nanoscale, tell us about what you say you're, you're going to be using to, at the nanoscale, the nanoscale meaning? So anything that's under 100 nanometers is nanoscale. Um, so to kind of picture that, if you imagine that the Earth is one meter wide, then the size of a cherry would be one nanometer. So that's that's kind of the scale we're looking at. Really, really small. Really so small, or popular, not looking at. <laughs> yeah, and in popular culture, I guess we're talking, you, people might have heard about nanobots or things like that. Yeah. Very, very small, Tiny small companies. things. Yes. Uh, thermoregulatory. So thermoregulatory, anything that's to do with, I mean, we're doing it all the time. Thermoregulation, we have generally kind of physiological ways of thermoregulating and behavioral, which is usually textiles or using heating systems, um, but anything through heating, cooling, or sometimes temperature sensing too. Okay, and why is that so important? So, as I've just mentioned, thermoregulation, we're, we're doing it all the time. We I'm pr th think we're all pretty aware of it at the moment. We have an optimum body temperature, which if you kind of go over it when you're going into a shop, you're not, you're not going in at the moment. But, so we have this optimum body temperature, and on a small scale, if we stray a little bit either way from that, we, we feel discomfort. And if we are feeling thermally not comfortable, that does actually have quite significant effects on our productivity or our mental and athletic well-being. But then when you kind of get further down the scale and straying further from that optimal, you are actually going to reach things like hypothermia and hypothermia and it becomes dangerous as well. So there's a very serious side to thermoregulation as well as the smaller individual. And that's what you are looking at developing, right? Yes, so I'm looking at developing, well, what I want to develop is a material that is going to, I hope, tackle energy consumption through heating. So at the moment we use 16% of global energy consumption is used for heating buildings. That's our primary method for keeping warm or cool. And if we can just change the behavior just a little bit and encourage people to why not even think differently? They, they won't even think to use the heating system because they're going to be perfectly thermoregulated using intelligent textiles, hopefully. <laughs> this doesn't exist at the moment. There is a lot of development currently already going on and there's some commercial products that are already out there, but there's still little niggles that need to be ironed out. So cool. So the way I'm hearing this is uh, every time, who here has uh, lives with someone who they have a constant ongoing argument about what temperature the thermostat should be set at. <laughs> okay. And who here is that person that's that says, just put on a jumper? <laughs> but also, and yeah. who here is the wrong person who says, no, I'm going to turn the heating up to 25 degrees? <laughs> you guys, so annoying. <laughs> you need a better insulated house. You need your house needs a jumper. <laughs> um, so, what it sounds to me like you're planning on doing is trying to go. No one would ever have to say put a jumper on because you exactly. would already be wearing the thing that's going. Oh, 
you're not at your optimum temperature. That's the dream, yeah. That's the dream. That's the dream. You're actually going to make that. Well, a bit like Andrew said, if, if I told you that, I would have to kill you, so. <laughs> but there is research in the area of thermoregulation and electronic textiles, which is working towards that. Wow. Uh, so it's basically, uh, it will happen. OK. Yeah. Um, Temperature sensors in our clothes, beyond being able to sort of reduce the number of arguments and therefore maybe even separations and divorces in uh, contemporary society, what are the other applications? Why would we want temperature sensors in our clothes? So with temperature sensors, I see there's... So the World Health Organization currently have a aim for universal healthcare. Um, and when you're trying to reach very remote communities and underserved communities worldwide, there's pressure to... To have sort of well, that we need technology such as sensors to be able to serve these communities without reaching them necessarily. So remote sensors become incredibly important, and where you can integrate it into textiles, then I mean, we're, like you said already, we're all wearing textiles. Um, the majority, majority of the world does, and so it feels like such a natural way to target that sensing behaviour. And we would, in the process, potentially massively reduce our energy consumption more globally. And help save the planet. Yes. <laughs> I got bit by bit. <laughs> yeah. I got to be honest. I'll be honest here. Who here understood that by studying textiles at either school or then at college and university, you would be solving problems on that sort of scale? You. Yeah. Well, obviously you did. You ran the course. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what Mark told me. So. <laughs> Um, it's so, so cool. And I think this is uh, the thing that you're talking about. We've got this image problem with it, but there shouldn't be because it's extraordinary work. It's so exciting. Yes. And how did, did you always know that? It's no. like, how did you discover this? It's like, did you do textiles as a subject at school? Um, no, actually, I was home educated, so I didn't, <laughs> didn't actually okay. go to school. Um, but so I did um, chemistry as my undergraduate. Um, I worked for a company called Outfit. Um, so I got very involved in technical textiles that way. Um, and then when, as I started this PhD, I just learned so much. And yes, it's a very exciting time for the tech story. Well, when did you decide that you were going to be in charge of saving the planet by <laughs> regulating everyone's temperature? Well, I decided that day one. No, no. just It's just found that out. Just found it. Found okay. it. We've heard this a lot today, I think. It's that thing about just pursuing your passion, the thing that you're interested in. Um, it's brilliant here. Really interesting to hear that you're home educated. We have a lot of, with the space agency, we have a lot of people that are coming to the projects that we run who are home educated, right. that live sitting outside the formal education. Um, and that you've still then ended up studying at the highest level with, you know, the spies. Yeah, yeah, cool. with spies. <laughs> um, what does the future of textiles look like to you? Um, so like I just said, it is such an exciting time to be in textiles because I see there's we're kind of like on the cusp of a revolution with it. And there's two strands. There's the sort of smart textiles, intelligent textiles, which is what I'm focusing on. And then you've got the environmentally friendly textiles, such as seaweed leather and all the kind of bio materials which are being developed on the other side. And I think they're going to come together and we're going to have smart, conscious textiles, which are giving us so much more than we'd expect from traditional textiles already, but hopefully not with such an impact on the planet. <laughs> I mean, it's not okay. like, oh yeah, fine. <laughs> Smart, conscious textiles. Conscious? Well, not conscious. Like, it's not going to have a brain. <laughs> but intelligent textiles, I mean. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> um, I really think I might be in a simulation. So, <laughs> um, it's extraordinary. Uh, can you use... This is You said, I asked you what your favourite yeah. questions were. And you said, my favourite question is... Can you use thermoregulatory textiles to hide from thermal cameras? I love this question because when it was asked to me the first time, it kind of took me off guard a little bit. But, but yes, you can theoretically use thermoregulatory textiles to disguise yourself from thermal cameras, um, which I think is why there's quite a lot of investment into it from the military in some, <laughs> some yeah. countries. Um, but yes, by using thermoregulatory textiles to... Um, use the fingerprint of the textile to match the surroundings you can disguise yourself thermally and either enhance or suppress that thermal radiation 
I guess the flip of the military use for that is that actually if we all had an item of uh, clothing that could, let's say, for example, you were trapped in some rubble somewhere uh, where, where people drop bombs regularly, uh, that you could turn on that to make sure that your your, your temperature was higher. Just That's thinking of be- point, yeah. <laughs> better applications than hiding soldiers who are they yes. going to go and sneak up on people. That's a much nicer way of looking at it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, genuinely amazing. Uh, brilliant. Thank you for describing that so yeah. excellently. Andrew, let's bring um, you back into the picture. No, no, you no, stay here. Yeah, you can get the chair. Okay. Um, you're changing the world. You're you're inspiring. <laughs> I'm trying to stay away from the speaker. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I wonder if actually, do you know what? Just bear, I'm just going to turn that like that. That might be better. Um, this be okay? Yeah. yeah. So um, we've asked you to consider a question which is uh, how do we make textiles uh, more sexy? But I suppose before then as well, it really isn't often, is it, that you get the opportunity to talk to people that are working at the leading edge of developing potentially <laughs> conscious <laughs> textiles um, and are inspiring the people to do all sorts of other things with it as well. So who has a question for either Andrew or uh, Ashley? Yes, and big voices, please, because we can't give you the microphone today. Okay. <laughs> You love textiles. Do you mind sharing? What's your name? Sorry? Cool. What's your name? Hi, Jean. So Jean has basically got a pitch for either Netflix or BBC One uh, Wildlife Unit. She's going to cast David Attenborough in a film. I mean, you need to move quick Can I if you want to get Attenborough involved. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> yes, Ashley. Wait, oh, sorry, I was just I saying I'd gonna... love to be in that. That sounds right. like an amazing idea. <laughs> well, that's what you're saying, isn't it? Get people like Ashley involved, the University of Hudson, basically a big promo film. And I think that's what Woven is about as well, isn't it? It is literally trying to do this. We're trying to do it here. I'm only a little bit disappointed. You're like, John, you could host it. <laughs> no, no, sorry. <laughs> Silence was definitely there, wasn't it? I'm sorry, John. I think you did a grand job. Um, yeah, you talked about... You worked in textiles. This is what we're trying to do because um, about, well, only about two years ago. So Huddersfield had a course. Huddersfield's got a rich history of textiles, as we all know. Heck, Woven, Woven's here. We founded what's called the Technical Textile Research Centre at Huddersfield and are growing it. So before we had courses in fashion and textile design and things like that. And what we're trying to do now is combine the scientific with textiles with the design of it with textiles. Because I'll tell you what. As si- I'm a scientist, I'm a textile geek. I get a curry at the end of a curry, I open up the packets and go, Oh, is this hand woven? Is this card? Is this whatever? So I'm one of those sort of geeks. And then we've got the design people as well. And if we talk together more, I think we could achieve an awful lot. But there's always been that slightly separate thing going on. So what we're trying to do, and I know we're trying to do the same thing as well, is try and build that bridge between the design side of things and the techies. Because if we could combine ourselves, it's a whole new area of research called transdisciplinary research. So everyone has their own strengths, but works together for a better overall aim. So we're trying to do sort of aspects of that. But yeah, absolutely. If we could get a blue planet equivalent thing of about to let the people people of the country of the world know about textiles, no, that'd be great. Not even joking. I mean, we talked about the great British sewing bee today. You know, there is a passion for it. And actually, that that documentary series where you have because there's such clear applications for it. Again, you get your own episodes. Yes. <laughs> um, hi, you, Mark. If you wanted to make textiles more sexy, you probably could make Ferraris and Lamborghinis and aeroplanes out of them. Oh, we already do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> 
what you're saying is, is the textiles is sexy. Yeah. <laughs> you're disagreeing with the question. <laughs> 70% of a BMW made of fabric. It's, you know, but it's true. But there's something about that it's not communicated. It's not understood, is it? You go at that, you go, it's metal <laughs> and so glass. Ferrari, body shell, it's all made of fabric. It's got a resin in it to make it hard. The brakes are made of the carbon fiber. They're everywhere. People just don't realise it. It's fiberglass. Yes. Yeah. Fiberglass is a textile. There you go. Flexible, it's a textile. Carbon fibre as well. Oi, you know, oi, he's, he's, he's had his go. <laughs> Bring the... <laughs> he's had his go earlier. <laughs> no, no. I think textiles is sexy. It's how we improve the perception of textiles and let other people know how they are. Because I would... It's, yeah, it's important that you... For me, that I work in something that I'm passionate about. And I know Ashley's the same. I know Mark's the same. I know Charles is the same. And we're working in these areas, and it's sharing that passion. Because a lot of people think textiles. I've said to my, some of my friends when I started doing my PhD, and I said, hey, I'm doing a PhD in not woven textiles. Well, give me an example. I think it was at somebody's house. I was just, well, that is. And I pointed to a J cloth. <laughs> After that, I was doing a PhD in J cloths. <laughs> so, and it wasn't that, but it was that people tend to think, well, textiles, it's just clothing, or it's, it's just sewing, or it's craft. And craft is fantastic and brilliant. And sewing is and all these different aspects, but it's not the only aspects. It's yeah. it's all encompassing thing. And that's the thing that I'm really taking from today, <clears throat> at the moment, that it's it's our life. I mean, my life has been changed today. I'm not even joking. Um, yes. Hello. Uh, Okay, it's a good question, which is a big part of the theme of today as well about sustainability. So the question, just so everyone else is, is uh, is the the material that you're talking about producing sustainable? Can we reverse engineer it? Is it biodegradable? Can we use that, it again? That is a really good question, and it is and it is a point of discussion, especially in e-textiles at the moment, because whilst we do have all sorts of recycling technologies to take almost anything apart, the fact is, if we start producing e-textiles now. I don't think anyone would know what to do with them, certainly kind of within the infrastructure we have. So designing for deconstruction, certainly from my point of view, is very important. And to get to a point where we're going to ever commercialize anything, it, I personally feel very responsible about the fact it would need to be able to be taken apart. And I suspect that most other people doing in the similar field to me would be feeling the same. But right now, yes, that is, if we're going to start using lots of different components to make e-textiles that that does need to be worked out perfectly so we don't just end up causing more problems i personally feel for the field that i'm in if we can make textiles that do more good than harm um, such as if we can reduce energy consumption then it's worthwhile but it does still need to be deconstructed that's a great, great answer i think you know it's the optimism the positivity <laughs> but there is a but there's a culture change as well that we're all experiencing where that question is being asked and the yeah. industry can no longer ignore it. Uh, it has to be, because otherwise your branding is going to suffer. So, unless your branding is just killing people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, when, you know, when the... When the global heating has got to a stage where uh, nowhere on earth is, everywhere is too hot, your clothes will be selling back. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> That's not really why. Not a solution. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, any other questions for either Ashley or Andrew or ideas on how to... Don't be shy because we're about to close the shed. So, you know, this will be... Hi, Julia.
Now, what are the other things that aren't the spaceship and woven to learn them, to hear about these stories? Well, you can follow our social media. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've actually just, because we're academics, we're gonna, sometimes a bit slow to pick up on some of these things. So we've just formed a new social media separate account, or I have, for Fashion in Textiles. Uh, we're on the Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we're on Instagram at Fash Textiles Hood with one D. Fash Textiles Hood. If you look up Department of Fashion and Textiles, follow us. We've also got a YouTube channel as well, and our Technical Textiles Research Center is Tech Textiles Hood. And again, we're on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. So I'm kind of running those things. So. I'm having a meeting on Tuesday to get some of my other colleagues involved, but I think we need to put a lot more stuff out there so you, the public, can see what we're doing and um, get involved and, 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 and work together because working with the community, working with Nat and Alison and the guys here that organize our work, working with people like Julia, working with industry, there's so many people all across this community touching so many of our lives, be it our jobs or what we're actually using, uh, it's really, really important. I think it's important to get the message out there, which is part of the making textile sexy again. Um, that's that's really important. So, yeah, if you follow us on there and everything like that, and, that, and of course you could then reach out to us and we could start a conversation. We're always willing to hear about ideas and how we can work with the community and with the companies, etc., etc. Thanks, Andrew. We were running a public lecture series as well. Is that, is that coming back? We are, yeah. We're going to bring that back. We ran a couple. So if you look on YouTube, there are some fantastic speakers. So the big organisation called UKFT, which represents the whole fashion and textile industry. It's a brilliant guy there called Adam Mansell. Um, and he gave, a, he gave a talk about fashion and textiles in this country, how important it is. It's really worth watching. It's about, I don't know, 40, 45 minutes and then some questions afterwards. They're all on our YouTube channel. They're a free resource. Anyone can access them. And as you know, as Mark said, there's a skill gap in textiles. We've got people. We've got industry coming to us saying we need people with the same skills. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's, he's not even here. <laughs> sorry. Is he, is, he, is he reaching us from across? The sorry, Andrew. So follow it shut, it shut me up anyway. So really did, good. didn't it? It was, yeah. um, <laughs> it was an unconscious thing. Jesus. Uh, so um, <laughs> follow on the social medias, basically, the Department of Fashion and Textiles, but also Woven. You know, it's here. It's happening in your in your town and in West Yorkshire here. It's 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 really present. So uh, stay in touch with Woven. And Woven are doing, there's still loads of opportunities to get involved with the programme, the events, the things that are happening here and, and Woven is an ongoing project as well, so it's going to be around certainly for the next two years. I know. I, I say I'm all right to say that, aren't I? Yeah, we're def- 23 and 325. Oh, cool. Okay. Sure. This is how committed Kirklees is to telling the stories, actually, and to developing those relationships and partners. And there's stuff happening in between those big events, big festivals, and two years worth of stuff yeah. happening. Yeah, so loads of opportunity. Um, did you want to say anything else, Alison? I, I don't think I had anything else to say. But if, if anyone didn't hear, big festivals in 2023 and 2025, is that committed to? Yes, yes. And um, and then pop-up events, a long-term project happening. If you've seen the yarn bombing uh, at Huddersfield train station, that obviously was a very long-term project. So although it has its showcase moment now in the festival, there's a, a you know at least a year, maybe even longer than a year, of people making stuff for that so there's a lot of things happening that you don't see until the big showcase moment so yeah on the website sign up to the mailing list take away brochure yeah we, we want more people whoop, whoop. <laughs> okay now look um we are going to we're going to finish up now um which is a little bit sad because the sun's come out it's a beautiful day it's been super interesting just like to say thank you to my guests here to dr andrew hewitt to PhD student Ashley Naismith, to all the guests here, so Julia from Upcycle, Charles and Mark from the University of Leeds, Haruske V from Optima, who has, sorry, uh, not from Ottawa, they weren't here today, sorry. But anyway, um, to everyone at Woven for inviting us to host this event today, but all of you guys that have made this happen, that are making everything happen, to Emma and to Alison and to Nat in particular, to Spectacular Spandex!
who I think are going to play us out one more time. Um, so all of you for coming down for supporters, do please spread the word. Tell the stories yourselves about the extraordinary things are going, the things you've heard and learned about today. Thank you very much for coming down. We love you all. Happy weekend, everybody. Bye.